Linux recently hit 4% desktop operating system market share, and I am really, really happy about that. However, it's still far away from competing with Windows or even Apple's Mac OS. Honestly, I'm sick of Windows dominating this space. Everything is being optimized for Windows, built for Windows, and I thought, well, what could Linux do to make itself more popular on desktop? So here's some of my suggestions, and some of these will be silly, so just keep that in mind. And also, it's fair to say that not all of them will be equally effective. Hardware is such a big reason why Windows is so widely used. Go on Amazon right now and search for a PC to buy. And what you'll find is that most, if not all computers there already come with Windows pre-installed, whether a laptop or a pre-built desktop PC. This means that millions of people buying new PCs end up using Windows. Now, there are retailers that do sell pre-built PCs and laptops with Linux, but quite frankly, they are few and far between. What we need is more big companies releasing custom Linux optimized devices like the Valve's Steam Deck. That thing is awesome and it runs well not just because it has a decent mobile AMD chip in it, but also because Valve really optimized SteamOS. Unlike with Windows, companies can build custom interfaces and settings that work really well with the hardware. And Steam Deck is a prime example of that, as it has custom overlays that help you choose how you want the game to run, like you can limit the FPS or increase it to optimize battery life, as well as provide you with useful info. In addition, the whole OS is gaming optimized, so you get that console-like experience, but you also have the choice of using it as a regular PC. I honestly believe that this one handheld console from Valve was a big factor in getting Linux to that 4% market share mark. Now, can we get more companies to follow a similar pattern? I mean, truth be told, you don't even have to design a new device for that. Take Sony's PS5, which runs a custom Zen 2 chip that's most similar to something like a Ryzen 3700X. And a GPU that's best compared to a Radeon RX 6700 Don XT. I mean, those are really not too shabby specs for just $500. If Sony could just add a desktop mode to the PS5 interface with Linux, where you could hook up a mouse and keyboard and use it, your, your PS5 as like a home PC for homework and media consumption, and maybe even content creation with editing, that would be so cool. And given that there's over 50 million PS5s in the world, it would certainly help Linux become more widely used. By the way, that wouldn't be Sony's first time ever doing this as they did release Linux for the PS2 back in 2002. Later on with the release of the PS3, it too had the option to run Linux. However, uh, in 2009, the support for it was uh, dropped for unknown reasons. And I mean, I can only speculate why they did that, but maybe not enough people used it. Question mark. Again, Valve and Sony are just examples that with good hardware that can also run Linux, they can make a really big impact to make Linux become more popular. Now, when we're talking about advertisements, a lot of people assume that they just don't work, which is false, by the way. Ads do attract customers. That's why all companies do it. However, do you ever see a Linux penguin mascot, whose name is Tux, by the way, tell you to install Linux? Well, my guess is that the answer is probably no. There's an issue in advertising Linux since a lot of the distros are, well, there's a lot of distros, right? Like if you're going to gather the funds to help spread the word about Linux to more people, how do you exactly do it? Do you tell them to install Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Arch, by the way? I'll talk about the whole Linux distro fragmentation problem a bit later. And for now, we'll just assume that we solved that problem. So here's just one of my ideas of a perfect advert for Linux. The year is 2025 and Windows 11 has been out for four years and it's nowhere near Microsoft's desired user numbers. But aha! Those Windows 10 users will have no choice. The support for that OS ends in 2025. And that is the perfect storm, the perfect window of opportunity for Linux to step in and advertise that, hey, look, not only Linux will still perfectly work fine on your Windows 10 PC after 2025, since it will have all the security updates, but it will also run faster due to Linux's low PC resource use. Did we also mention it's free? Linux is free. You can just download it, install it, boom, you're done. Anyway, this could be a billboard, a TV advert, perhaps a bus in London or something like that. But that 2025 October time period is the moment for Linux 
analytics to strike if there's ever going to be an ad campaign. Speaking of the moment, remember that moment when you first got into your computer science class and you were met with Windows 98 or Windows XP if you're around my age? Now, being an adult, I still remember those classes very vividly. And what operating system did my school use to teach about computer stuff? Well, it was Windows, of course. Meaning that my school probably to this day still uses it and gives many kids their first experience of using a PC with a Windows OS. Please comment down below if your school ever used Linux in their computer class. I'll be looking for those comments because I'm interested if that was a thing somewhere in the world. But yeah, again, Windows gets such easy wins because of its dominance. It's easy for schools to pick Windows. It's easy for developers of games and other software to prioritize Windows. It's easy for hardware to be shipped with Windows out of the box, all because Windows is dominating the market. Like I know the reality of the situation uh, of just being the most popular desktop OS. It, that's just, just how it is, but it's so annoying. What's also kind of annoying is when you get these content blocked or inaccessible messages and you can't do anything about them unless you get a VPN. Surfshark VPN allows you to change your location with a single click and encrypts your connection, making you more secure online. It also has additional security and privacy features like alternative ID that can create new personas for you to use online for a more private internet. Together with a fully featured antivirus and more. Use the code ACADEMY when purchasing Surfshark and get two additional months for free. It also helps to support our channel and make more videos, which I really appreciate. In our last Linux video, I made a point that having too many Linux distros isn't too confusing, but honestly, reading your comments and talking with a few of my friends, I perhaps want to change my stance on that. Like I know that many Linux enthusiasts consider that having more distros is a benefit. I don't disagree with that at all, but we have to acknowledge that this distro fragmentation does present some challenges when bringing in new users to the platform. It matters less when there is a device that's already running a predetermined and pre-installed version of Linux, like again, Valve Steam Deck with SteamOS. However, just look at the advertising part or recommending a distro to your friend. Several distros come across your mind when doing so, and you might even recommend different distros to different people, which I guess like it can be a benefit, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it presents this challenge when everyone's going to be using a different OS, kind of. So look, I don't like consolidation, but can we just agree that if we had the Linux distro, like a singular entity that would be the de facto default for every Linux user, that it would make downloading it easier, support would be easier, and also advertising would be a lot simpler, etc., etc. Ubuntu, I think, is one of the most popular distros out there, at least in my circle. People just assume that Linux was Ubuntu. Anyway, put in the comments below, let me know if we need just one distro, and if we had that one Linux distro, how would that impact the market share? Now, my final proposal is perhaps a little out of this world and stupid and silly and whatever, but hear me out. Just for a second, take a look at these two. This is an iPhone and this is a Google Pixel. Or in other words, iPhone and Android. In a sense, they're both running very different operating systems, yet they're also very similar in many ways. Like take something as simple as installing an app. You go to the Google Play Store on Android or on the Apple App Store if you have an iPhone. And both devices, you just click install and boom, the app is installed and ready to use. Software updates are also very similar and are handled in a very similar manner. Using a camera is simple, right? You just open and you just snap a picture. They have similar phone unlocking features, like, you know, you have your face ID and your camera unlock on the Pixel. Now, I'm not saying that Linux and Windows are super different. I actually always recommend Linux Mint to people who are switching from Windows to Linux. But even so, there are differences between the two. Like on Linux, you can install apps via the Snap Store, which is kind of like the Windows Store, or you can also use the software manager that's included. But I mean, who likes Windows Store anyway, right? Most users on Windows, at least, use .exes, and you can actually do the same thing on Linux as well if you're using Wine. Many Linux users tend to stick with the terminal since once you get used to it, installing apps actually is way easier by just typing in commands. And to be frank, the rest is also kind of similar, especially because most basic users, what do they do? They browse the internet. And what do they browse the internet with? A web browser. And so you can imagine that Google Chrome is 
exactly the same if you're using like Linux or Windows or it doesn't matter. But I want to hear it from Windows users because besides all the software, you know, I have, not everything is supported obviously, or, you know, certain hardware also lacks drivers on Linux, but what are the main functional everyday use differences that make you not want to use Linux? Like I'm genuinely interested to know, like maybe you don't like the general flow of the installing apps on Linux, even though again, it's kind of similar or maybe the secure, but sometimes annoying way of Linux super user access of having to enter your password to do anything. Or perhaps once you had a bug that took forever to troubleshoot and it left a bad taste with Linux. Let me know in the comments below. Like I'm genuinely interested to know. Listen, I think the whole Windows gets easy wins argument is a big one. And it really stands true. Like seriously, Linux gets a lot of things right, but the problem is that most people just don't get to experience it. They're stuck behind whatever already works and they call it a day. And I mean, can you really blame them for that? I was going to make this video a lot bigger and name like 10 reasons on how to make Linux super popular and increase the market share, make it much bigger, but I just can't. I simply can't come up with enough good ways to make it happen. I still do stand that by pre-installing Linux on new PCs, which people tend to buy, is probably still the best way to make Linux more popular, though, you know, that is also kind of like a double-edged sword because at the same time, people who are used to Windows already, that could also leave a bad impression for new users when they realize like, oh, what is this Linux Mint thing? What is it? Like, I can't even install my .exe files, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Linux users should really celebrate the 4% number. It's a big achievement, honestly. I guess we should also thank Microsoft for that as well, since, well, some of their decisions do a great job of uh, promoting Linux with their mishaps like having ads in the start menu, ouch. By the way, go watch this video next where we go over reasons why Linux isn't as popular as it should be. And you can also watch me lose my mind over the fact that Adobe stuff is still not on Linux yet. And I'm hoping that will change. But anyway, that'll be all for now. Take care.